In this video, we're going to talk about the volumetric lattice tool in Fusion 360 and specifically about some tips and tricks on different ways that we can use this tool to our advantage, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about the volumetric lattice tool in Fusion 360. Now, when this tool was first released as a preview feature in the product design extension last year, we did cover it. I activated the product design extension and we jumped right in and we just played around with the tool. I haven't really covered it more after that on this channel, but there have been some updates, so I do wanna talk about it again and maybe give you guys a little bit of information and some tips on ways in which we can use this. So in this video, we're gonna cover a handful of things. If you don't wanna activate the product design extension or the 14 day trial, you can go ahead and just watch the video and get some information about how it works. If you do wanna follow along, you can go to the description of the video and download the data set that you see here on the screen and play around with it on your own. It's just a simple linkage part and the goal here is to have a volumetric lattice in the middle section of it, but still have the structure on the outside for the most part. So we're gonna look at a couple of different methods to achieve this. I'll talk about some pros and cons of each of these and give you some tips along the way. First, the volumetric lattice can be found under modify and you can also go to the plastic tools. It is in the product design extension. A lot of these tools will only be active once you activate the extension. And you can see it's here under Modify as well. What we're gonna do is we're first gonna talk about selecting faces. So when I go into Modify and Volumetric Lattice, we need to select a body that we want to apply a lattice to. We can increase or decrease the size. We can go to Solidify and we can increase or decrease the thickness of each of those ribs. And then we can go to the Offset section and we can select faces that we want to remain as a solid body. Now, one of my main issues with this method here is that the interface between different sections of the design and the lattice that's being created, they're gonna have a lot of these undulations or different textures that we can see here because essentially the entire thing is getting converted to a mesh. Now, at this point in time, it's going to be just a graphical preview until we actually force it to create a mesh but everything is getting converted to a mesh. So you're gonna end up with areas like this around the boss where we have essentially a blending that happens between them. Now you can increase or decrease this blending distance, but it's not going to smooth out the geometry at all. You can start selecting more edges, for example, if we select this fillet, but you can see we still get these kind of wavy sections here. So this method, is very simple and straightforward, but there are pros and cons. Now for me, there are a couple more cons than pros, which is why I don't generally use this. The cons are the interface between the areas you wanna keep solid and the areas of the lattice. The second con is that we can't do a structural simulation on this part. Now, generally when we talk about light weighting or creating volumetric lattices, then we really wanna focus on structural components. The main reason we're doing that is because we're lightweighting our structural components. But in this case, and it's not just Fusion, it's most software that can generate these types of textures or volumetric lattice structures. It's sort of a post process. It's after the fact, and we don't have a way to do a structural simulation on them. So because of that, we're gonna explore another method. But before we get there, I wanna give you a quick tip on ways in which you can speed up the face selection process. So what I'm gonna do is go to my selection dropdown to selection filters, and I'm gonna turn off select all and only focus on body faces. Then I'm gonna box select everything, which will give me all of the faces. I'm gonna shift select to deselect some of the faces that I don't want to include. And then I'm gonna right click and create a selection set. Now once I have a selection set, Inside of here, the selection set can be selected quickly and easily. So for example, I can just click this button and now everything that I had saved is going to be there. You wanna to remember to go back to your selection filters and turn them back on. Otherwise you won't be able to select things like sketches or edges on your part. So make sure you turn those back on. Now, if I go into modify and volumetric lattice, I select the body that we're interested in. And then in the offset tab, I simply go to my selection set and use the option to select those faces. 
Uh, keep in mind that every time we make a selection, it will need to update and regenerate the volumetric lattice. Because I just told it to select 90 faces, including a bunch of small fillet edges, it's going to have to go through and regenerate that lattice structure, and that can take a little bit of time. But once it does, you can go ahead and play around with these various variables like the thickness, and that was much quicker than me going around and manually selecting 90 different faces. But again, it is very computationally heavy, so make sure that you are careful with what you're selecting. Not a bad result. It does give us a much better result than the first go-round, but again, not the ideal candidate here. So now that we have that tip, the next thing I want to talk about is how we can manually force this issue where we can have a lattice on the inside but maintain that solid body on the outside. The first step for me is going to be to copy and paste that body just using Control c and Control v Then I'm going to hide body 2, and I want to use the Shell tool. I'm going to select the entire body, not a single face, and I'm going to give it some sort of inside thickness, let's say 3 millimeters, and just hit Enter. Now, if you select an entire body instead of a single face, what's going to end up happening if we go to Inspect and Section Analysis is that we've essentially created a thin wall part. Now, this thin wall part is great. However, we want the lattice to be on the inside. And the way we do that is by taking this original solid body and the one that now has a hollow core and using Combine. So in the combined tools, we're going to be using cut. The target body is going to be the inside, which is the original solid, and the tool body is going to be the outside. So we want to cut the outside away, but we do want to keep the tools, and we're going to say OK. So now the outside body is going to be that larger one, and the inside body is the smaller one. Now, one thing I want to do is I'm going to temporarily change the color of this body for two reasons. I'm going to show you that it produces a problem downstream, but also it helps us identify what we can see. We're not quite done yet because I want the top and the bottom to be open. So I'm going to start a new sketch on the top. We're going to be using offset. Just grab the edge of that face. We'll come in minus five millimeters, and then we'll finish the sketch. So E to extrude. And we're going to extrude down to the bottom face. We're going to hide body one, and we'll join these two together. Then we have to remove that from body one, so we'll use combine. This time we're flipping the selection. So we're going to select the top as our target, the inside green piece is our tool body, and we're going to keep the tool. So now the inside piece and the outside piece should be perfectly aligned. So this gives us the option to make this our lattice. I'm going to go ahead and rename this lattice. And this outside piece can be our structural piece. We can do a simulation. We can see if it's structurally sound for our application. And then we can have the volumetric lattice on the inside just to fill in space or add a little bit more crush resistance or structure as needed. So what we're going to do from here is, once again, go to volumetric lattice. We're going to select that inside piece. And you'll notice that instantly nothing happens. Well, the reason nothing happens, and I'm going to go ahead and say OK before I do anything else, is that the volumetric lattice at this stage is an appearance. It's a trick. Now, until we right click and we tell it to create a mesh, so turn that volumetric lattice into an actual mesh, all we're looking at is a graphical or some sort of appearance of the mesh that we designed. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the appearance override, which will take away that green, and now we can see the lattice underneath. Once again, it's just an appearance at this stage. Now we're going to right-click, and we want to edit the lattice. So when we look in here, you'll notice that as we look through here, we've got texture map controls, we've got unassigned, we've got create mesh, but we don't really have a way that says edit lattice. So how do we go back and how do we make changes to this? Well, the way that we do it is at the very top, you'll notice that now we've got something called volumetric lattice and there's a pencil icon next to it. So that's how we go back and we make changes to the lattice after we're done. So now we can increase or decrease the size of the lattice structure. We can increase or decrease the thickness of each of the edges. And we can also use this offset value if there are specific faces that we may or may not want to solidify. Now, the reason that you might want to solidify some faces is if you want to control the intersection 
better between areas like around this boss. So for example, if I select this outside face, this is going to give me likely a better result and a better connection point for the lattice structure and the rest of the design. So maybe I don't want the lattice structure to go through those areas of those bosses. Of course, we could exclude them from the shell as well. There are many other ways that we could go about this, but this is just merely to show you the example. So I'm gonna reduce the thickness value down to five millimeters, and then I'm going to say, okay. So at this stage, we now have a lattice. We have the original solid body. If we take a look at a section analysis as we're looking through this, we can see that we've got a lattice structure on the inside of our solid body. And this is essentially what we wanted from the start, but now we still have a solid body on the outside. We can do finite element analysis. We can program tool paths off of it, whatever we want to do. But we're not quite done yet because remember, this is still a graphic. This is still an appearance and we can still select these outside faces of the original design. So how do we get these together? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to right click and create a mesh. Now at this point, we can talk about things like mesh refinement and element size. I'm gonna use the default numbers, but keep in mind the element count here is around 2 million. Now this is going to be a drag on the system so you can play around with these numbers to reduce the mesh element count. However, if you're doing a gyroid infill like this, and if you happen to be reducing the solidify slider so that the thickness of these is pretty small, you're gonna end up with a lot of mesh elements just in order to get that resolution. So keep that in mind that these numbers do matter. You don't wanna just make sure that the refinement is fine or high detail. You want to look at these numbers and see if your system can handle it. So now we've got the original solid body with the volumetric lattice structure that we built. We've got a converted version of it, which is a mesh body, but the original is still a solid body. Now here is something that I want to stress. We want to make another copy of this body. So control C, control V. And the main reason we want to do that is because the original lattice is still a solid body we can still do stuff with it if we need to. But once we go to our mesh tools and we take this outside piece and we tessellate it, we convert it to a mesh, what's gonna end up happening is we can't really go back. So now we've got the mesh for the outside and we've got the mesh for the inside. These are two still separate solid bodies. Now, if you are 3D printing this, you can assign different materials to the body presets to the different pieces of this. And you can likely 3D print both of these as individual bodies, but that's not always the case. So we do wanna talk about combining them together. Now, this is another step in the process that does take quite a while, but we can use the mesh combine tool. Note that there are two ways to do this. We've got join and we've got merge. Now, merge is going to keep all of the mesh elements, even if they're overlapping, whereas join is essentially combining them together like merge, but it's going to remesh it as well. So this is a better option, but keep in mind that this is going to take some processing time. So we're gonna say, okay, I'm not worried about keeping the tools in this case, because remember, I can always go back to those two original solid bodies and I can convert them. So we're gonna let this crank for a minute and try to figure out how all these different pieces are gonna intersect. Then we're going to review it and then we'll go back and we'll take a look at the option to create a custom volumetric lattice. All right, so you can see here that now we've got a single solid body. Once again, I'm going to go to inspect and take a look at a section analysis. And you can see now that we've got the mesh has been redone and everything's connected. It's not a perfect solution. There are still some problems associated with this mesh. So for example, you can see here that there is a, a like an inside face on part of this. So potentially you might wanna consider doing things like having a small offset on all the outside faces where the volumetric lattice is. And that would is, you know, kind of ensure that we we get a good intersection between those. Some of it's gonna come down to the mesh element size, the type of infill that you use, and all those other different types of settings that you go through. However, the basic process is for us to consider 
making solid bodies or areas of our design that we want the mesh applied to, as opposed to just selecting those outside faces and using those offset options. Now that we've taken a look at that, let's also talk about generating or creating our own volumetric lattice structure. To do this, I'm gonna start a brand new design. I'm just gonna make a simple box for us to look at. So just using some of the primitives box and we'll just drag this up. And this is gonna be sort of the basis for it. Now, the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start a new sketch. Just pick a sketch plane, doesn't really matter. And I wanna make sure my 3D sketch option is on. What I'm gonna do is generate a 3D sketch and we're gonna talk about basically how we use this. So I'm gonna create a straight line. I'm gonna create one out to the right, maybe bring one down at an angle and rotate this around. Come from the origin out in this direction and we'll go back in this direction as well. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm gonna use equal and make sure that the lengths of all of these are going to be equal. So I wanna set this equal to that this equal to that. Notice that things are kind of flipping around a little bit, uh, something that we should uh, definitely be careful with. So let's do Control Z and bring it back. Make sure that this one is horizontal. And I'm gonna try to give this one an angle of 130 degrees, and then we'll finish the sketch. So let's bring the solid back, go into Modify Volumetric Lattice, and under Cell Shape, we're gonna use Custom. Now for custom, the geometry is gonna be based on these edges that we select. And essentially anything that we have selected here is going to have a mesh tube generated just based on the fact that we have these straight lines. The body we're gonna select is the solid body. The cell size I'm gonna to set to 15 just so it's a little bit easier for us to see. And then I'm gonna to start to reduce the solidify amount. So as you can see, as it gets smaller, essentially what we have it looks like jacks from an old you know bouncy ball and jacks game but essentially you can see every line that we created has this mesh tube associated with it so you can create all sorts of different types of geometry but if you want to build a custom lattice structure then you can use this method and this will allow you to create whatever structure you want some cautionary tales here however is you do want to make sure that if you are creating something that needs to merge with another element, that you consider creating those lines so that they will always intersect with another version of that element. For example, giving all of these a dimension and making sure that where this hits, if you were to pattern it, is going to be important so you can get all these elements to stick together. Because right now they're just sort of floating out in space. It's not going to be very helpful to you. The other thing I do want to mention in the setup is that we have the option to move and rotate, which we took a basic look at, but this now lets us do a little bit more with moving and rotating this, positioning it inside of our design. It doesn't really matter much when we're talking about a cube or a rectangle, you know, sort of block like this, but if you have more organic shapes, moving the lattice structure around can be a good way for you to accurately position it. In this example, I'm gonna say okay, but once again, remember the lattice is not applied until we turn it into a mesh. We can also unassign the volumetric lattice. It's still here, but it's not assigned to that body anymore. So that's something that we can go back and we can edit or we can delete it and get rid of it. But just remember that it is an appearance that's applied to the body until we push it into a mesh. So at this point, if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.